everybody. This is Diana from So Very Crafty, and we are here today to make this fantastic roll-up shopping bag. This is a super simple beginner sewing project that anyone can make who has basic sewing skills and can sew a straight stitch. Super simple to make. All you need to do is add a little bit of elastic and a button, and you can create this roll-up bag. Open it up, give it a nice lining, it's sturdy, it's practical, and it's small. All you have to do is roll this baby up and it is ready to rock and roll for your next shopping trip. Combine this with my previous video of the reusable produce bags and you will never use plastic again. I assure you, plastic is out reusable is in and this shopping bag is part of that reusable uh, idea so let's give this one a try okay let's get started now how are we going to make our bag we're going to use three different fabrics for for this bag um, to make it really fun for us the first is our lining fabric which is our orange check fabric that we have here the next is our main outer fabric which is our vegetable print the next is our accent fabric which is our green we also have a little piece of elastic which you can't really see on camera here unfortunately but it's there and a craft button any craft size button is all you need for this project. Now we all are going to cut our fabrics but I, I've done that for you here but I am going to give you the measurements. We are going to take our main outer fabric and we are going to cut it 10 inches by 16 inches wide. That's 16 inches wide by 10 inches long for our main outer fabric. For our accent fabric, it's 16 inches wide by 7 inches long uh, for the accent fabric. Now for our lining, it's going to be 16 inches wide by 16 and a half inches long, and that's all we need for our main part of our bag. But we do have our handles, and that's going to be 4 inches wide by 20 inches long. That's four inches wide by 20 inches long for our handles, and we're gonna cut two of those. And for each of our fabrics, we are cutting two of each fabric because we have two sides of our bag, so we need two of each of our fabrics. Now, most of my fabrics here are remnants that I got for half price at Joann's. Um, the vegetable print I did buy by the yard because I thought it was really cute for this project, but um, remnants work perfectly well for this project. Um, and I love getting my fabrics 50% off. So if you can buy cotton remnants for this project, I say go for it. 50% off is 50% off. So definitely try and give that a try. Now for our first step, we are going to take one of our outer pieces and lay it flat on our work surface. Next we are going to take one of our exterior uh, accent fabrics and we're going to place it right sides together. That is pretty sides together and we are going to then take our elastic and make a little loop out of it. We're going to find the middle of our two pieces of fabrics and we're going to stick our loop inside there. So I just folded this in half to kind of get a sense of where my middle of my fabrics are so I can adjust and put my little loop of elastic in between my accent fabric and my main outer fabric. And I'm going to place a little clip there so I could hold my elastic onto my fabrics and keep it in place while I go on to my next steps. Um, I love these wonder clips. Um, I think they're fantastic. If you don't have any, I'll put the link down in the uh, comment section below. So if you want to get some wonder clips of your own, you can go ahead and get those. Um, but I, I use Wonder Clips a lot. So then we're going to sew a one quarter inch seam allowance all the way across 
back stitch a couple of times across that elastic because we want to make sure that it's nice and secure because it's going to get a lot of use uh, when we use our shopping bag over and over again. But let's go and cut and sew that one quarter inch seam allowance across the bottom of our fabrics and we'll be right back after we go to the sewing machine. Now we're back and we have sewn our one quarter inch seam allowance and we have our elastic firmly in place, but that's not the final step for this uh, top and bottom part of our bag. I'm going to turn this part over and I'm going to open up that seam and I'm press it. I want that seam to be open because I'm going to top stitch along the top and along the bottom of the front of this bag to make it a little more professional looking and to have it nice and flat. Now we're back and we have nice and flat seam, uh, top and bottom, and a uh, nice and professional looking finish for our shopping bag. We are going to repeat this process now for the back side of our bag exactly the same way. So now we are back, we have the back of our bag and we have a front and a back that are identical except one has a piece of elastic and one does not. So now we're going to place those two pieces of fabric right sides together and we are going to sew all the way around the sides and the bottom using a one quarter inch seam allowance. That's a one quarter inch seam allowance all on the sides and on the bottom but of course we're going to leave that top open. Okay so we have now uh, sewn our sides and our bottom and we're going to flip this bag right sides out. Now we can see that our elastic is right there in the center at where it should be. We have a front and a back and our bag is starting to take shape the way that we want it to. We're going to poke out our corners here a little bit um, and keep our bag nice and neat to the extent that we can. We're just going to fold it up here and uh, take a look at the other side. Yep, we are ready to go, but we're pretty much done with our outer bag, so we're going to fold this up and set it aside. Now let's go to our lining pieces. We are simply going to put these right sides together and we are going to stitch them using a one quarter inch seam allowance along the sides and part way on the bottom. A little way on each side of the bottom because we're going to leave an opening in our bottom seam. So down the sides and part way on the bottom on each side so that there's an opening in the bottom because we're going to need that to turn our bag later on. Okay, we're back and we have finished sewing our lining. As you can see, we have a hole in the bottom, which is what we want. We need to have that hole there for turning. We're going to set our lining aside and we are now going to make our handles. The handles are super simple to make. We are simply going to fold the raw edges to the center and then we are going to fold the handles in half to enclose those raw edges and we are going to press. So we're going to walk over to the iron and we are going to press these handles and I'm going to come back and show you what that looks like. Now we're back and we have finished our two straps. We have top stitched them on both sides. They are ready to go and now we're going to add our straps to the bag. As I stated, we not only pressed our straps, but we top stitched them on both sides of the strap handles so for a more professional look and to keep those raw edges enclosed. Now we are placing the straps on the bag and we are going to measure in 
5 inches from each side. So we should get out our ruler and measure 5 inches from each side so that our handles are the same on both sides of the bag. We're going to pin our handles in place so that we uh, are even all the, on both sides of the bag, front and back and side to side. So just you know, use a, use a ruler, make sure that you're nice and tight and situated so that your handles are even because you don't want your bag to be wonky. Flip that bag over, put your second set of handles on and pin those in place as well so that uh, now you have two handles uh, for your shopping bag and again you want to pin those in place so that you uh, they won't move when you're moving on to your next step. You could baste these uh, in place but I didn't really see the ne necessity to do that. Um, I just kept the pins there. That was fine for, for what we're doing here. But if you would rather baste them in place uh, you could do that as well. So now we are going to take our lining fabric and we're going to place our outer bag into our lining fabric and we're going to make sure that they are right sides together. So you can see our fabric. The orange fabric is on the inside. Our outer fabric is on the outside. And so when you put them together, they are right sides together. We are putting them uh, so that the seam lines are adjacent to each other. We are going to line up those seams. We're going to put the, the straps inside the bag in between the layers because that's where they need to be for the purposes of making this bag. We're again, we're lining up those seams and we are going to pin the seams. I prefer to pin each seam before I pin the rest of the bag. So I'm just going to pin one seam uh, together so that they're nice and neat and even. And then I'm going to go over to the other side of the bag and I'm going to pin that other side of the bag as well so that we have a nice even uh, bag that's uh, together uh, with uh, no wrinkles or pleats in it because we are going to sew these two layers together using a one quarter inch seam allowance again. But first of all we are going to pin this top edge all the way around using our pins again so that we can later sew this using a one quarter inch seam allowance. So let's pin. Okay, now we have pinned our bag. We are going to head over to the sewing machine and we are going to sew a one quarter inch seam allowance all the way around the top and come back. Now we're back and we have sewn our one quarter inch seam allowance. Now we are going to turn our bag by pulling the outer bag through the hole that we left in the lining. So we're just going to pull that out and just keep pulling until it comes out through the bottom all the way. The lining is out, the handles come out, and everything is lined up. We're going to stuff that lining back into the bag and make it look like the bag that we anticipate that we're going to finish up with. Now we have the bag, our lining is stuffed inside, and we are going to want to press the, our bag so that we have a nice seam at the top because we are going to top stitch that top all the way around using a one quarter inch seam allowance. So let's head over to the sewing machine. We're going to press and then do our one quarter inch seam. Well, now we're back. The miracles of a video and we have top stitched our seam. 
Now we are going to add our button. How do we do that? We are going to place our bag with the elastic side down, pull down the handles, fold the sides in, and we are going to roll this bag down and down and down until we see our elastic and then we are going to pull that elastic until we find a place for our button and place a pin. We're going to pin this spot because that's where our button is going to be sewn. And we are going to hand sew a button, just a craft button, it doesn't need to be anything special, right in that spot where we just pinned. Okay, now we uh, are off sewing our, hand sewing our button and we're back. We have hand sewn our button onto our bag and our bag is complete. All we have to do is roll it up one last time and we are ready to go. So we simply do the same thing. We put it down on the elastic side down. We are going to pull down uh, our straps, pull in the sides, roll down the top, and pull down our elastic, push it around our button, and our bag is complete. We have this ultra spectacular, fabulous roll up shopping bag. And I hope that you really enjoyed this reusable, zero waste, reusable shopping bag that you can make using basic sewing skills. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up for this video. And please, please, please subscribe to my channel so that I can give you more of these simple sewing projects that anyone with basic sewing skills could make. That's our goal here at Sew Very Crafty is to teach beginners and intermediate sewists projects that they could make using the skills that they have. So please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that we can have more of these basic sewing projects. Thank you and goodbye.